Hey guys, welcome to this. Appreciate you watching this. And we're going to talk about what some people, maybe in the credit repair world or debt settlement world, uh, thought of as sort of the silver bullet that there was no escape for debt collectors, particularly collection attorneys, and you could sort of force them into a violation of the law. And uh, I don't think much of this, you know, so let's look at this question or this theory. And then look at the actual law and see what it says. So here's the idea. Can I send a cease and desist letter and a dispute letter, or sometimes called a debt validation letter, to a debt collector at the same time? Okay, well, why would you do that? Well, this was the theory. You send a cease and desist, what does that do? Well, that collection agency, and this was often sent to collection lawyers who were thinking about suing, so we'll just use it in that context. The collection lawyer cannot communicate with you anymore. There's a few exceptions that don't apply here. But then you also send a dispute letter or a debt validation letter to that same collection law firm, which means in order for them to collect anymore, they must validate the debt or verify the debt in writing. Well, see, you got them caught now, right? Because if they honor the cease and desist, then they won't verify the debt. And then when they sue you, you go, aha, you sued me without verifying the debt. But if they verify the debt, you go, wait a minute, I told you cease communication. You violated that law. So this was sort of uh, marketed or, or told to people as this is the ultimate solution. And as I mentioned, and probably as my tone suggests, I don't think very much of this. So let's look at the actual statute and see if this works. Because sometimes people have these great theories, at least they sound great, but then when we look at the law and we imagine being in front of a federal judge, we go, oh, okay, I see why that won't work. So let's take a look at it. 1692CC is the cease communication. So if you notify a debt collector in writing, and remember, all cease and desist has to be in writing. This is different than revoking consent for uh, robo-dial calls to your cell phone, which sometimes you can do that verbally. But this is talking about a cease and desist under the FDCPA. Notify the debt collector in writing, the consumer. And here's two ways you do it. You can say, I refuse to pay the debt. So you don't have to use the word cease or the word desist. You just say, I refuse to pay this debt. Or the consumer wishes the debt collector to cease further communication with the consumer. Well, if you do either one of those, so you say, I refuse to pay the debt, or I want you to cease communication, the debt collector shall not communicate further with the consumer with respect to such debt. And then there's a couple exceptions that don't apply to us. So you send that cease communication or that refusal to pay letter they cannot communicate with you further. Now, they can still collect. They can credit report. They can sue you, but they cannot call you or write you. Okay, well, let's look at the other side of this, 1692 GB. So if you remember from our other video, 1692 G, the subsection A is the, the uh, validation notice that the debt collector must send you. And typically, this is sent either the first communication or within five days of the first communication. It says you have 30 days to dispute. If you do dispute, we'll verify the debt. We'll get you a copy of the judgment. We'll tell you the name of the uh, name and address of the original creditor if you ask us. So, again, you can dispute verbally, and that's fine, but that doesn't trigger the 1692 GB, which is what we have up on the screen. So, Consumer notifies debt collector in writing within that 30-day period that we just talked about that the debt is disputed or that the consumer requests the name and address of the original creditor. Now, you can do both, okay? The debt collector shall cease collection of the debt. What, forever? No. Until the debt collector obtains verification of the debt or a copy of the judgment or the name and address of the original creditor. So, in other words, whatever you've requested Okay, they have to send you. Uh, in, now, let me back up. Some people send these, you know, 28 uh, item requests. That's not what we're talking about. They either have to verify the debt or get you a copy of the judgment or the name and address of the original creditor. 
And a copy of such verification or judgment or name or address of the original credit is mailed to the consumer. So this was the theory. All right, I send a cease and desist. They can't mail me anything. They can't call me. They can't mail me anything. But then I send a validation notice, a dispute notice, and now the debt collector cannot go forward with the suit, with filing a lawsuit against me, until they mail me. See, I got them either way. That was the theory. Well, the problem is it's just too clever. Uh, I think a federal judge is going to look at this and say, well, you sent them two things that are contradictory, and you put them in a, a bind where they can't do either one. If they, do, if, if they cease communication, then they can't verify the debt. If they verify the debt, then they didn't cease communication. And I'm trying to remember the name of the movie. Maybe I can put a link into it, or maybe you guys will recognize it. It's the one where the, the guy's in the bank, and it's an old guy, and a bank robber comes in, and I think he says something like, you know, freeze, everybody on the floor. And the old guy says, well, son, which is it? Do you want me to freeze, or do you want me to get on the floor? You know, it's that type of thing. And so I think a federal judge would say, if you send contradictory things to them, then the debt collector is going to get to choose which one they want to do. Now, if you send this to a collection law firm and they want to uh, proceed with the filing the lawsuit, I think they do have to uh, verify the debt. And so I think they could say, hey, you sent us a cease and desist, but you also sent us a request for verification. So we're responding to the verification. I think a judge would say they can do either one. And again, it we sometimes see debt collectors do this or credit bureaus do this and where they try to put the consumer in this, you know, if you go to the right, you're doomed. If you go to the left, you're doomed. And it's just too clever. And, uh, you know, as a consumer advocate, somebody who files lawsuits against debt collectors, credit bureaus, mortgage, I love it when they do that because I get to show that to the jury. Look at how absurd these guys are. They're trying to put us in this, you know, unwinnable position. And I think the same is true if we as consumers try and do this to the debt collectors. And we're misusing this law if we do it. So do you have the right to send a cease and desist letter? Absolutely. You can send that. Do you have the right to send a dispute letter, a debt validation letter? Absolutely. But don't try to abuse this because there's an old expression that, Uh, sort of bad facts or bad arguments create bad law. So we don't want to create bad law out there where now these federal judges are looking at these debt collectors sympathetically. We don't want that. We want them to say, we got the debt collector, we got the consumer, everybody has the right to operate as long as they stay within the bounds of the law. We don't want the federal judge saying to the consumer, hey, you're trying to be too cute here. And let me, maybe sometimes the federal judges go overboard in in a response to them. We don't want that either, where they sort of give uh, almost immunity to the debt collectors. So we've got to be careful how we use the laws, make sure we use it in the right way. And while I certainly appreciate creativity, and we've done some really creative things for our clients, We have to make sure that it's not being unfair to the collector. And this, I think, is being unfair. So choose which one you want to do. You want them to stop communicating? Great. You want them to verify the debt? Great. But let's not try and get overly cute here and end up having sort of a backlash against us by the judges. So that's my thought. You may agree, may disagree. Uh, There may be some opinion out there from a federal judge that I don't know about. I've never seen this actually litigated. I know we would not bring this type of suit if somebody tried to put a debt collector in that sort of uh, unwinnable bind there. And But maybe others have and judges have written about this. I just haven't seen that. So definitely feel free to share your comments and uh, any questions you have. And I appreciate you guys watching this and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.